All right, thought I'd give you a quick little update on what's going on with the road to Charon. Uh, pretty interesting little scenario. It's got uh, one of the cool things about games is when it gives you uh, a game gives you a lot of choices uh, that you need to make during the execution of uh, you know a given turn or a, se or a series of turns. And this game uh, does that well, and also does it in a very simple manner. Uh, it's a I would say a great uh, introductory title that has enough uh, chrome on it to keep things interesting uh, with exploit movement, the chits, uh, the various chits that you can uh, pull or use, I should say, for uh, the various um, activities during a given turn, whether that's giving uh, units uh, two column shifts on a mountain attack or providing uh, exploitation uh, movement capabilities or uh, making uh, heroic defense or attack uh, options uh, available to each side which is going to adjust the odds. Uh, the enemy reaction phase allows you to uh, reinforce different parts of the line and this game I think when you play it, I haven't finished it yet, but we'll, we're halfway through basically, and we'll uh, probably not going to post a whole lot more about it. I'm just going to wrap, uh, finish this up, and wrap it up. But uh, what you, I think, will find most of the time is you're going to pick one of these two avenues of approach, and then it's a matter of uh, can the the Commonwealth either break down or bear down hard on uh, a given avenue. I'm using this one because I'm going to get you get reinforcements coming in here, turn five or turn six, and uh, that might allow me to pinch these guys uh, and, and give them a hard time. Uh, the supply rules really haven't come into play yet, so I can't really comment on how they're going to impact things. And given that it's uh, weekly, I think it's weekly turns, uh, probably not a hugely significant at the moment anyway. Uh, I like the addition of the air power here. You know, particularly if you get the air chit, that gives you a column shift plus one combat factor versus just one combat factor. And it's funny how uh, it's obviously a lot of thought put into the game because the combat factor here uh, often makes the difference between being a three to one attack or a four to one attack or a two to one versus three to one and whatever the case may be. Unfortunately for the Commonwealth, uh, every single die roll that I have made, uh, bar one, for the combat has been a one or a two, which means that every single attack I've taken a loss pretty much, and I've got uh, five counters over there to prove it. Uh, so it's been a little bit of a beat down for the uh, for the for the Commonwealth side, and whereas the, the results have usually been that these guys have uh, either had to retreat or they've elected to stay in the hex and taken a step loss. So uh, it's you know a nice fun game. Uh, I would put it in the category of objective Moscow, objective uh, Kiev, etc. Uh, in terms of uh, level of complexity and richness of detail and all that sort of stuff, yada yada yada. Uh, fun stuff. Not ch I don't know what the retail price is. I bought it on sale. If it's more than twenty bucks, I'm not sure this is a twenty dollar game. Uh, you know, just not. Particularly because of the freaking counters. I mean, these things have been sticking to my shirt, to my sleeve. Uh, to my fingers when I pick them up. Uh, of course, now it's not going to do it. But, uh, you know, you're in here messing around and then one will stick to your finger and fly off. And uh, anyway, annoying. Other than that, it's a fine little game. Adios.